Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about the height of your bowing arm. So it's a very individual thing how high or low your bowing arm might be. It depends on uh, the width of your shoulders, whether you're a very tall, large person or quite small uh, with narrow shoulders, a bit like me. <laughs> um, and this can also help um, people who have got back injuries or stiff muscles. Um, so let's have a look at it and let's examine the reasons uh, that you might choose to have a higher or lower bowing arm. So the thing you have to think about is the wrist. Now if your wrist is very very curved because you have a very low arm it may cause you trouble because it puts more weight on the fourth finger holding the bow like that and if you try that uh, yourself you will see and feel that the fourth finger suddenly has to take a lot of weight of the bow and possibly it restricts the amount of movement cushioning movement in your fingers so you must never restrict uh, the fingers being able to cushion the bow it's it's kind of essential both in smooth playing and playing off the string. So there's, it's a question of um, you deciding what is right for you, but there are certain uh, limits to what is really good technique and what will make you uh, a better player. So let me explain how a high arm actually works. So the arm, if it's quite high, um, the forearm works a little bit like a pendulum and as you go down the hand swivels a little bit and then as you go in the hand also swivels a little bit. Okay so there's a, a little swivel and if the arm is held lower you can't really have the pendulum effect because the wrist is higher than the elbow. So that's really something to think about because the more uh, curved or uh, lower the elbow, the more curved the wrist and then the more weight is put on this part of the hand, the fourth finger, to actually hold the bow. So you have to use much more hand and I, I feel you're sort of breaking up the weight distribution and movement uh, of the arm if you're sort of interrupting it by curving your wrist too much. I mean, you can obviously a little bit of wrist curvature is necessary for the cushioning movement, but uh, a lot like that, I feel is too much because if you try this, you will see how much more um, weight is put on the hand. So there are a lot of variables here, so I can't really tell you what um, is the absolute correct. It's never like that on the violin. All technique has got to be tailored for your particular uh, physique. Small hands, large hands, very tall. Uh, I mean, there are adjustments that very tall people need to make. For example, my teacher at uh, the academy had hands that were literally <laughs> twice as long as mine because we measured them once. It's unbelievable how huge hands he had. And just like Itzhak Perlman has mentioned, uh, when my teacher was playing at the top, he had such large fingers that he had to sort of keep getting them out of the way in order to play. And uh, I'd love to have problems like that. <laughs> fingers that are too large for the violin. It sounds like heaven. But back to reality. Um, the height of your arm or your elbow makes a massive difference to your ability to be in control of the bow and your comfort and your ability to um, choose the strokes and to play the strokes with ease. And uh, having a high elbow isn't just for small people or uh, people with back injuries, it, it may be your choice because you try the feeling of the pendulum and you really like it and you find it very enabling. 
because when you're playing off the string, the pendulum idea is incredibly good to get your bow off the string like this. So just playing lightly off the string with the feeling of the, the high elbow, the forearm and the wrist and the fingers are very free because when you play off the string you don't want your whole arm to move. Even though it's a short stroke, there's still a lot of tone and control that can be produced. So, um, pendulum bowing. Uh, it's a normal stroke, but there is a, a feeling of a relationship between where your elbow is, what your forearm is doing, what your wrist is doing and what your fingers are doing. And the stroke doesn't come from the elbow like this, okay? You're not leading with the elbow. You're really leading with the forearm, which is just so interconnected with the top of the hand and the fingers. And as you go out, there is a, a sort of turning. It's called pronation, but it's a turning of the hand so that your hand is not um, like that all the way down towards uh, outside the scope of your body. The hand turns a little bit like that for comfort. So as you can see, everything depends on the length of your arm and the width of your shoulders. And most bows are <laughs> this length. So you've got to accommodate and find a way to accommodate a, a great deal of comfort and ease in your a bowing arm. And I think pendulum bowing is an incredibly useful um, little thing to think about uh, that might unlock quite a lot of tone. For example, if you're playing on the G string, and it's very, very quiet and expressive, and you come up to the heel, right? There's a feeling of the, the weight of the bow um, almost feels as if it becomes heavier. And to distribute the weight and take the, all the pressure off your, uh, your fingers here, the arm comes into play. where you can feel that you're allowing the, uh, the forearm here to do a little bit more work and not let the top of the hand and the fingers do all the work on the G-string. And the difference is amazing, it's much more comfortable to think of spreading the weight uh, back here. So sometimes there's a feeling of the stroke coming down the arm, but sometimes there's a feeling of the stroke coming back up the arm. Doing it without the bow is very useful just to get the feeling of the pendulum idea. And do remember that the upper arm here really always follows what uh, the more active part of the arm, which is really the forearm and the hand and the fingers are doing. So you never lead, you never have the feeling of leading with your shoulder or anything like that, or with your elbow like that. It's not like that. Uh, a proper stroke is really um, working in unison and it looks very natural. So get rid of the bow, look in front of the mirror and just do that. And give yourself the feeling of the pendulum. So I'll leave it there and I hope that this helps. Uh, it might unlock a few um, ideas. So uh, I'll say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.